Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we are going to be having a look at the inner workings. Actually, we're gonna be taking a pretty surface look at the bio structures and layouts for three different companies' motherboards. We're gonna have a look at MSI's overall BIOS layout with their new UEFI style BIOS. We're gonna look at ASUS's BIOS layout with a new UEFI style BIOS. And Gigabyte is still using the traditional style BIOS, but we're gonna have a look at where to access the most important features on your P67 motherboard using a Gigabyte motherboard as well. So I'm gonna include some annotations here so you can pretty much keep watching if you want to see the MSI one or click here. You can click here if you want to see the ASUS BIOS guide and you can click here if you want to see the Gigabyte BIOS guide. All right, so we're gonna focus on the useful features that you actually need day to day first. You've got a couple utilities here. Probably the most useful one in here is not in here, actually, that's in settings. M Flash. This is how to update your BIOS. Now, the UEFI BIOS is actually a much larger file than we're used to, so you're going to have to use a USB key. I actually flashed the BIOS on this board once, it worked great. You just click M Flash, you click your USB key, you find the file, boom, you're done. Awesome. You've got a couple other system settings in here, although most of these you probably won't have to touch too much. Uh, for one thing, here we've got our, let me see. If you wanted to turn off any of the integrated peripherals or change the SATA configuration, you will find that within the settings and the integrated peripherals. So I did change my SATA mode to AHCI mode because I am using an SSD drive. So that's one that you might have to do. You can also access RAID mode through this part of the BIOS. Uh, one of the other things that you're definitely going to want to use is the boot configuration. So here you can set up whether you want the full screen logo display, which I hate, so I'm going to turn that off. I forgot before. And then you can also pick which boot devices you want to use. If you have multiple hard drives, you can also change the priority from which drive is your boot drive, which one's your storage drive, and you can move them around in here as well. You can see your system status, which is going to show you not a whole lot that you probably don't already know, and you can save and exit. That's pretty much all that we're going to need from inside there. Next you have your overclocking dashboard and you should check out our overclocking guide if you want to see how to use all of the features in here. Uh, there's pretty much not a whole lot that you'll need in here unless you're overclocking. One of the great things about a GUI like this inside the BIOS is that it allows them to really organize things in terms of what you're going to need and where it is. A couple other things, green power, so this basically allows you to turn off the phase LEDs on the board and turn on or off CPU phase control. Okay, so there you go, that's pretty much all that's in there. And last but not least, we have some games. We have a memory game called Pair Match. We have a breakout game and finally Poppy Run, which uh, you have to actually put in your motherboard disk in order to access some of this stuff. So I do have the disk in the drive right now, but I'm going to show you guys Puppy Run just for fun. I've shown you all the useful stuff already. Here we go. So I'm going to start a new game of Puppy Run and it looks like there's a countdown timer as well as, uh, oh wow, I died. Now this is easy mode on the ASUS UEFI BIOS utility. So we've got a couple of things that we can do here. First of all, I love the layout of the ASUS EFI BIOS. It's really slick. You can access most of the really basic stuff that you need right from here. So you can see your temperatures on your CPU and motherboard right off the bat. You can see your CPU voltage as well as the motherboard's recorded voltages for your three main power supply rails. You can see your fan speeds and you can actually expand this. So you can see all of the fan speeds for the motherboard headers on the board, whatever you have plugged in, it'll show you a fan RPM. Okay, you've got a couple of other things you can access, for example, different languages. So I can switch my BIOS to French, Deutsch, whatever these ones are, uh, without any difficulty at all. You can also change your system performance, so you can set it to power saving if you want to, well, save power and have it run quieter. So I'm assuming that'll affect things like how fast it turbos, over your, turbos your core, uh, how much it will uh, turn up or down your fan speed as temperatures increase, all that kind of good stuff. Either that or it doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, I'm gonna set it to ASUS Optimal, which is all about performance, because that's how I roll. If I'm buying a deluxe series board, then it better be about performance. And then this one right here, boot priority, love this. Look at this. I can just mouse over, 
to see which port this particular thing is installed on. In this case, it's an Intel 80 gig SSD. It's on port five. And then I can just drag it around like that. So I want that to be my first boot device. Done. Here is my uh, optical drive. This is my DVD-ROM. Let's say I want that to be first done. Just move it around. Love it. So we'll show you advanced mode in a minute. So ASUS's advanced mode is more like a traditional BIOS layout, except that we can use a mouse. And check this out. Check this out. OK, OK. We're going to go into AI Tweaker, which is their overclocking settings and whatnot. OK, so hold on. First, I'm going to scroll back up to the top, because I was down at the bottom before. We have a little GUI that shows us how far we scrolled. OK, watch this. Watch this. Mouse wheel. Yeah, that's right. Mouse wheel in the BIOS. So I'm going to show you guys what we're going to find inside the AI Tweaker tab. First of all, we have our overclock tuner, which is an auto overclocking feature. Pretty much, yeah, don't, yeah, don't use that. OK, memory frequency. You can change your memory frequency up to the standard supported DDR3-2133. Their EPU power saving mode is here, so you can enable or disable it. I'm all about performance. Going to leave it alone. You can also set uh, what degree of EPU settings you want. OK, the OC tuner. Uh, sorry, that's the. Uh, my bad. That's the advanced overclocking thing. So here we'd just be setting manual overclocking. That's to adjust your base clock. Or we can use XMP, which we can load profiles in order to set the overclock for our memory. Sorry. Sorry. OK, DRAM timing control. You can change all of your RAM timings in here. Primary timings, secondary timings. I'm right clicking to go back, which is a very convenient little feature. CPU power management. Everything is in here. Now this is cool. Look at this. Turbo mode parameters. So you can set the power limits OK, in terms of the TDP. So how many watts of TDP. You can set the time limits for when your CPU is actually going to turbo up and turbo down. So that's pretty neat. And then you've got all of your standard stuff here, like the CPU ratio, the turbo ratio, the turbo mode, whether it's on or off, as well as Intel speed step. OK, their digital VRM has a whole bunch of other features in here as well. You can change, the, you can actually enable or disable the VRM spread spectrum, which you should pretty much have disabled. I can't think of a reason to have that on. You can change the phase control to standard optimized or extreme. So extreme will turn on all of the power phases on the board at all times. It's not good for power consumption, but I guess if you're doing, you know, liquid nitrogen overclocking or any kind of extreme stuff like that, you could set it to extreme mode. Should you so desire. I mean, look at that. You can even put it on manual adjustment. So what, how fast you want them to switch. Pretty neat. OK, duty control. You can change it from either temperature probe or extreme. So extreme is going to use the current to control how which phases are on and off rather than temperatures. CPU current capability. You can set it up to 140%. Suggest choosing a higher value when overclocking or under high CPU loading for extra power support. There you go. So these are all neat features. You can adjust your CPU voltage as well as all of your other standard voltages as well as your CPU spread spectrum. So that's all your overclocking stuff. Then we go into advanced where you can configure all of the features on your CPU, including things like hyperthreading, how many cores are active. You can select either PCI or PCI Express graphics for your initial boot. You can change your SATA configuration, so what mode you want to run in. It is in AHCI mode right now, which would be preferred unless you're running RAID with an SSD. Your USB configuration is here, as well as your onboard devices configuration, where you can turn on and turn off various features on the board. Finally, we've got our hardware monitor. We had most of the important stuff in the basic view, but you can see there are some more details here. Not really a whole lot to speak of, although you can change the settings for QFAN control so you can turn it on or turn it off. And then you can also change it from silent, turbo, or manual mode. So that's pretty neat. I love having features like this where you can set what temperature you want, set what fan speed you want, and then leave it to monitor itself. Here is another UI for the boot selections. And pretty much I'd recommend doing that in basic mode because I like being able to drag around my boot order. That's pretty neat. And then this is tools. So here we have Drive Expert, which pretty much is just their way of saying RAID 0 and RAID 1 for the drives that are plugged into the third party controller on the navy blue ports. OK, so there's not a whole lot to see there. There's their BIOS flashing utility as well as their overclocking profile. So you can save to and load from profiles if you find like a maximum performance setting, then you can also even try underclocking and undervolting to get the best power consumption possible. And you can save a bunch of different profiles if you so desire. 
In the Gigabyte BIOS, we find what we've come to expect from a Gigabyte board over the last several generations. So this is a traditional style BIOS using the award software uh, layout. So we have a couple of things that we do have access to from the main menu here. First of all, we can press F8 to get into QFlash, which is their in BIOS flashing utility if you do need to update the BIOS to get access to more features or more stability, newer CPUs, whatever the case may be. We also have the ability to save and load uh, BIOS profiles. So if we find an overclock that works particularly well, we can press that F11, we can save it to a profile, we can change the name, all of that good stuff. It's a great feature, very useful if you're uh, either optimizing for one thing or another thing. We can go into the Motherboard Intelligent Tweaker, MIT, and we can... Here, sorry, I didn't show you where I went. And this is where we have most of our overclocking features. So we can see the current status of the board, including things like uh, what turbo modes we're using. We can also see how much memory is loaded into our dim slots, the overall settings the board's using right now. Then we can go into, sorry, if I press it down, we can go into our advanced frequency settings. We can change the clock ratio, assuming we have a K-series or a turbo-enabled chip. We can also get access to the advanced CPU core features in here as well. So this is one feature that I just love, being able to change the turbo ratio depending how many cores are being stressed. So you can actually use this to overclock as high as you can go and then tweak it a little bit further. So if there's only one core, maybe you can get it to turbo up just a little bit higher if you're running a game that is only single threaded, for example, to get that little bit of extra performance out of your board. We also have support for changing the base clock, DMI, and PCI Express frequency. So this is something I don't recommend doing. Please don't do this. There's more details on that in our overclocking guide for the P67 platform. So feel free to check that out. But yeah, pretty much don't do that. You can also adjust your memory multiplier in order to get access to up to 2.133 gigahertz on your RAM if you have memory that supports that speed. We can get into the next menu here to see the advanced memory settings. So that's where you can change things like your DDR voltage, timings, etc, etc. You can actually set separate timings for your channel A and your channel B memory if you so desire, although there's not much benefit to that because you probably shouldn't be mixing and matching memory anyhow. I'm having a little bit of trouble with my keyboard here, there we go. My down arrow isn't working of all things. So in here we can set all of our advanced voltages including load line calibration, which is V-droop. So you can either turn it on, which improves V-droop directly or disabled, which follows the Intel spec, which allows the voltage to droop down when you're under load. You can change your CPU core, your QPI VTT voltage. There we go. Your system agent voltage, pretty much the only one you could actually possibly care about besides CPU core is this QPI VTT one. And other than that, leave everything else alone, please. Also DRAM voltage, you can go up to 1.65 volts safely. Everything else here, pretty much don't touch unless you really know what you're doing. Miscellaneous settings, you can turn on or off virtualization technology. That's the most relevant thing in there. All right, standard CMOS features. This is pretty much just telling you what's going on, how many things are plugged into your SATA ports, all that good stuff. Hard disk boot priority. I only have one drive, so here I can adjust which one is my primary boot drive and which one is not. You can also set which is your first, second, or third boot device. And you can turn off this feature that I hate, full screen logo show. I'd prefer to just see what's going on in the BIOS rather than having a graphical logo. Integrated peripherals, you can turn on or off many of the features that are on the board by default. So such as your onboard audio, if you want to turn it off, you can turn it off. You want to turn off your eSATA, you can turn it off. All that good stuff. All right, power management setup. Here you can, yeah, pretty much I don't touch this stuff. So uh, PC health status, you can see your voltages as well as your temperatures, your fan RPMs. And then over here is mostly not very useful stuff, except for these guys. You can load your failsafe defaults, which is going to set the BIOS to the absolute safest possible thing, should boot pretty much no matter what, as long as something isn't wrong. And then you can also load optimized defaults, which is going to attempt to kind of have a safe, optimal operating configuration 
if you check that button. So thank you guys for checking out our BIOS guide today. We've covered the three major tier one brands of uh, sort of aftermarket motherboards because Intel would be considered a tier one as well. And we've shown you all of the different features, where to access them within these three different brands of BIOSes for the new Intel P67 LGA 1155 platform. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more guides and other great tech videos. I forgot my question guys, so I have a question for you. Do you prefer the new UEFI graphical BIOS design that we found on the MSI and the ASUS motherboards, or do you prefer the old school BIOS setup with keyboard inputs and no mouse clickiness and scroll wheels and whatnot? So please comment below the video and let us know what you think.